Welcome back to another episode of Facebook Live with here in the FM garage. My name is Mike and today we're going to talk about some of the preparations that you'll want to do before the weather starts turning really cold. So I know, I know. Why am I here and not Eric? Okay, I apologize. Eric was supposed to be in here helping out and talking about these kinds of things, but he got so excited. The fall weather is right around the corner and I'm, I'm sure all of you have seen pumpkin spice is back out. So he had to take off. He got really excited. So I'm here in his place, but don't worry. We'll still cover a lot of the important stuff. If you have any questions while we're discussing any of these topics about how to winterize your car or what to do if you want to drive your car throughout the winter, drop them in the comments and we can talk about them as we go along. So a lot of people have a discussion about are Miatas good cars to drive through the winter? Do they actually make decent winter cars? Can you drive them in the snow? Um, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, the short answer is yes. You can drive them throughout the winter, uh, the winter and doesn't require a whole bunch of major prep to be able to do so for most people. So in most situations, um, the big decision is, do you have another car that you want to use as your winter driver, or do you want to be able to use your Miata year round? And opinions vary. There's not a wrong answer here, but just for argument's sake, we're going to say that you want to be able to drive your car year round. So for this kind of driving, what do you need to be able to do? Well, really the main thing that you want to be able to do is make sure that you're safe. There are a lot of the same people driving out on the roads when it's cold, when it's icy, when it's snowy, when it's wet, when it's slushy, whatever. And not everybody is that great of a driver, especially if they're driving the mundane run of the mill kind of cars and they don't really care about vehicles as much as you and I do. So they might not have the kind of preparations put forth to be able to drive safely throughout the winter like we are. So the biggest thing that you'll need to do for winter driving is winter tires. Now, a lot of you will say, but wait, I've got all seasons. They're fine, right? Mm, maybe they might be fine. A lot of times, especially if you're not driving in very inclement weather, you know, if you get maybe a little bit of snow or a little bit of ice every now and then, but usually you don't go out driving in that kind of condition. Eh, yeah, all seasons are usually just fine. Now, if you want to be able to take your car anywhere, and especially if you want to have maximum grip, if it does get slushy, icy, snowy, that kind of stuff, then really winter tires are a good idea. They have a different tread compound. Basically, the rubber has different, um, a different makeup that it allows that kind of rubber to stick better and have better traction when the weather gets really cold, and especially if it gets really wet or icy. So there's definitely some major benefits there. That's probably the single biggest thing that I would say is if you want to drive through at the winter, and especially if you're gonna be living somewhere that has a lot of inclement weather, winter tires is a good idea. A lot of you will say, oh, I live in X place. You know, we don't get snow, we don't get ice. The weather here might get down into the 50s, but we don't get that weather. Okay, I get it, I get it. You guys live in paradise, you know. Fair enough. Good for you. <laughs> We're happy that you get to drive your Miata with your summer tires all year round. That's awesome. Um, for the other two thirds of the country though, this is a relevant subject a lot of people have questions about. So for those that have to drive throughout or want to drive throughout the year, then this is the kind of stuff that's important to cover. Now, um, specifically on tires, just to give you an example, we've got a couple tires over here to my left. And these tires, we've got a set of performance summer tires, and then we've got a set of winter tires. Now, very obvious difference between these two. Now, you can see that this summer tire, the tread blocks are really big. They're really wide. It's got big, big sipes here, but they're, you know, fairly, um, fairly smooth over across the entire service here. Um, this is obviously designed for maximum grip in the warm weather on dry asphalt. Now, compared to the winter tire here next to it, you can see that it has a lot of individual small little blocks, and each one of these little blocks has these little sipes in them, little wavy lines. Those little guys are actually designed to catch and maintain snow or little bits of ice. And 
snow on snow traction or ice on ice traction is a lot better than rubber on snow or rubber on ice in most cases. So this is kind of an extreme comparison between the two types of tires, summer and winter tires. And obviously you'll have different levels of performance and all season tires in between, but this is just an easy comparison. You can really see this is obviously designed for use in the snow and cold weather, and this is very obviously a summer tire. Now, one thing that's important to note is that summer tires, if you do drive in cold weather, they are not rated for extremely cold weather. So most, uh, most tire manufacturers that do have uh, performance summer tires will tell you, don't drive these in, or don't even store them really, in weather that's under usually like 40, sometimes 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, a lot of times because the tread compound that makes up these tires is so aggressive and so sticky that if it gets cold enough it'll actually crack and you can have a major problem if you're driving out in cold weather with tires that aggressive. Now on the other hand of course winter tires are built to be able to withstand the cold temperatures. They work great, they stay pliable even when it gets down below freezing, but by the time that you get back up into the warmer temperatures, you know, say 80 degrees or above, they're really going to start wearing quickly because that rubber compound's just not made for those kinds of warm temperatures. So they have a trade-off, but it's by design. They each have their purpose, and for most people, if you have to drive or choose to drive in colder weather like that, it's usually a good idea just to have a set of summer wheels and tires and some winter wheels and tires. That way, all you have to do is when it starts getting cooler, swap back to these guys, and then in the summer or you know late spring when it's starting to get warm enough to be able to drive the car again without worrying about snow or anything like that happening, switch back over to your summer gear and you're ready to go. So that's probably the, the one thing I would recommend doing absolutely first if you want to look into driving your car in the winter. Um, a good brand of tires. One of the questions that we got recently actually was asking about what, what brands of winter tires do you recommend? And um, there's a ton of them out there. You know, these ones are Ice Pro 3s or something like that. You know, there you can get discount whatever, whatever tires from Walmart. Um, and usually they do just fine. Generally, as far as performance is concerned, the ones that are usually at the top of the heap are like the Blizzaks. Obviously, everybody or most everybody knows the name Blizzak. That's because they've been around for a long time and they do a good job. Um, if you are also looking for something other than Blizzaks, there are other brands out there. Uh, one that most people may not have heard of is a tire called the Hakapalita from Nokian. Um, they're a Finnish company, I believe, or at least from the, the Norwegian north <laughs> of Europe and they do have really good performance winter tires. Um, so those are probably the two top ones that a lot of people like to use or that are using them for performance snow and ice driving. Um, good options out there, obviously take your pick within your budget for what you're using your car for, but those are kind of the two that stick out in, in mind for us. So back to talking about some of the other things that you want to do as far as winter driving. Um, Usually stuff such as you want to do some maintenance checks on your car um, just to make sure that you've got everything ready to go besides your traction. You want to be able to have the car reliable. You don't want to have to run into issues that you're stuck on the side of the road, obviously, because that sucks anyway, but it's going to suck even more if you're stuck in a snowbank, you know, of four feet of snow and you can't go anywhere. So. Um, easy things to do when you're doing winter driving is check your battery. Do you know if it's healthy? Have you replaced it any time recently? If you're not sure, drive down to your local auto parts store. Most of them are going to have a tester that they can check the health of your battery. So easy thing to do, easy thing to replace, especially in our cars. They're pretty easy to get to, don't have to pull out seats or anything crazy. Um, another good one is checking your wiper blades and your washer fluid. So a lot of wiper blades are sold and advertises all season, and most of them are okay. Um, but there are going to be ones that are actually winter specific, and they have kind of a, a rubber sheathing all the way around them. And if you drive in really inclement weather, you see a lot of ice or a lot of sleet and stuff like that. Those ones that are all covered in that rubber will help prevent having your blade actually torn off if they freeze. 
So getting specific winter wipers is a good idea. Getting washer fluid that can actually resist freezing and, uh, and getting hard, that doesn't work on anybody's windshield, um, down below whatever temperature that you're gonna be driving in is also ideal. Another good thing to do is on your tires that we were just talking about, check your pressures. So this is something that's super easy to do. Um, a lot of times, especially if you swap out your tires before the weather really starts going to, to you know, kind of crappier, not so fun to drive in kind of weather, or maybe great weather for you. If you like sliding around, actually it's, it's a great time. But if you are doing that kind of thing, if you're swapping out your tires before it gets to that point, and then the weather starts changing and really getting cooler faster, your tire pressures are gonna change a lot. So make sure that as the, the temperature is either rising or lowering down to those temperatures that you're gonna be using those tires, check your tire pressures often just because the pressure inside the tire will change with the temperature. Um, another thing as far as your engine health is concerned is that if you haven't done an oil change or if you're running uh, more of a, a summer blend, shall we say, of oil in your engine, you may need to go to a slightly thinner viscosity oil for winter driving. So this should help as far as cold starts are concerned. A lot of times you'll see on your manual, you'll have a range in your manual saying that above this temperature, use this oil above or below this temperature, use this kind of oil for NAs and NBs. Generally, it's going to be 5W30 if you're in really cold temperatures, and then 10W30 if you are in moderate to warmer temperatures. That's pretty normal. Check your manual. It'll tell you what you need to run. Um, if you haven't done it recently, this is also a good time to check all of the rubber stuff in your engine bay. So hoses, belts, rubber engine mounts, that kind of stuff. Cold weather can adversely affect rubber in a pretty quick way if your rubber is starting to get old or if it sees a lot of vibration, or if it's been worn down. So check your hoses, your belts, your mounts, that kind of stuff. Um, if you do experience any kind of problems in your engine bay, you know, you've got whatever drivability problem, that's an easy thing to check. But if you are checking it preemptively, hopefully you won't have to run onto that or run into that on the road. Um, if you're like me and you have an old car that's 15, 20, 25, whatever years old, a lot of times you'll be dealing with a soft top that's not quite fresh and minty. It's probably got a few holes in it or it's starting to get worn down to the point where you may have some tears in the window, uh, things like that. So when you're driving throughout the winter, that's only gonna get worse. Um, you can ask me from experience that if you have a plastic rear window in your Miata and you've got a bunch of snow on the window and you wanna be able to see, don't reach back there and bang your window, because if it's an old plastic window, it'll probably crack. So that kind of stuff, be very gentle with your top, um, especially if you have an older car, because the cold temperatures may cause it to actually crack, uh, even worse than it already is if you haven't replaced yours recently. So go through, double check your top, keep it clean, and remember, brush it off from the outside gently. Don't smack it from the inside, because you'll probably create more problems for yourself. Um, another thing that a lot of people forget about is that it's a good idea to keep an emergency kit with you. And no matter if you're just driving to school, driving to work every day, or this is actually something you plan on driving cross country, you should have an emergency kit in your car, especially throughout the winter. So having things such as a flashlight, having a heat reflective blanket, those shiny ones are usually really good for winter conditions because they, they don't get soggy. Um, having a set of road flares, having a knife, having a flashlight, things like, or I'm sorry, a, uh, a shovel. Those are the kind of things that you may not think of, but man, when you get stuck in a, a bar ditch because you slid off the road into a snow drift or something like that, you may need to dig your car out. You may need to set off a road flare so that way you can alert other drivers around you or to get help. So make sure that you've got some kind of an emergency pack set up in your trunk. Um, that way, if you do get in trouble, you've got a way to get out safely. Uh, a lot of people also mentioned using some kind of a ballast as weight in your trunk. So uh, I've done it both ways. You can, you can add a little bit back there, you know, maybe a couple bags of kitty litter or something like that is fine. 
Um, usually in Miatas, because the weight balance is already so good, as long as you're careful and you drive like you're intending to drive on a slippery, icy surface, then you'll be fine. Um, but adding a little bit of ballast certainly doesn't hurt. Now, besides this, say, you know, I don't want to drive my Miata. I don't want to have to worry about cleaning it up. I don't have to worry about sliding off, getting into a wreck with anybody. You know, I'm just gonna store my car for the winter. That's fine. That's a great idea, especially if you have another car and this is kind of your baby and you wanna keep, keep it nice, uh, take care of it. So what kind of things do I need to do in order to prep it for storage? Um, an easy one for this is simply get it cleaned up. So doing such things as uh, an oil change. If you're storing your car for multiple months, an oil change is a really good idea. That way any of the nastiness, any of the, like, the fuel that might have worked its way down into your oil, any of the contaminants, any of the carbon buildup, that kind of stuff, it's not sitting on your engine internals just corroding away at any of the insides for months at a time. So do an oil change, run the car around for a few minutes to get all that oil circulated, and then park your car for the winter or for however many months that's going to be for your particular situation. Um, another easy thing that you can do is add some fuel stabilizer. You can get this from lots of auto parts places, from Walmart, you name it. But looking for some kind of a fuel stabilizer to help keep your fuel from absorbing as much moisture as possible and from losing octane. That way when you go to start it again in the spring, you're not going to have problems cranking, 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 but the engine never starts. So easy thing, fill up your tank with known good fuel after you dump in the stabilizer, that way you can help promote it to be swirled around and mixed with all of the fuel in your gas tank. Um, if you have, or if you run a summer mixture of engine coolant in your cooling system, this is a good time to check it out. So especially um, if the garage or outside that you're parking the car is gonna see really cold temperatures, you don't want a chance any kind of damage to your engine block or your head because you left your summer coolant mixture in there. So a lot of times we recommend like a 70-30 mix for your coolant to have 70% distilled water and 30% antifreeze in there. And that mixture generally has a really good um, heat dissipation rate compared to like a 50-50 mix. So the only downside is that it doesn't protect you down quite as cold as a 50-50 mix. So if you live somewhere where you're seeing temperatures that get down below freezing, you probably want to strengthen your mixture and add a little bit of antifreeze and take a little bit of your existing mixture out. Um, especially if you're going to be leaving the car for a few months, a good thing to do is either disconnect your battery or hook it up to a battery tender. A lot of times, even though you may not have anything running at the time, these cars, and especially some of the newer cars, they do have some electronics, you know, clocks, other sensors, other monitors that are going on inside the ECU, the, uh, or, or even the body control unit that are running all the time, even when the car's not on. So either disconnecting your battery or putting it on a battery tender will help preserve the life of your battery. So that way, again, when you go back to start it the next spring, it's not either a dead battery or has suffered a big hit and then just doesn't charge very well from there on out. So you can get battery disconnects that are simple little screw style um, fittings that go right on your battery post or the battery tenders that just clip on. Both are easy, easy options. Um, another good thing is that when you park your car, if you park it for months, you're parking it on a flat surface. And even if you fill up your tires, they're still going to be pressing down on that same spot at the bottom of your tire for a long period of time. And all that weight over a period of time, you know, it may take months before this happens, but you can actually cause some of the rubber material on that bottom of the tire to flatten. And the next time you drive the car in the spring, kathunk, 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 kathunk. it's pretty awesome. I don't recommend it. So. To be able to avoid that, an easy thing to do is jack up the car, put it on jack stands, make sure it's secure, of course, um, but that way your tires aren't actually 
in between the car and the ground, so they're going to stay as round as they ever were. If you have wheel chocks or if you have wheel stands or ramps that have the kind of the curvature, so that way the tire sits down into it, that'll help prevent flat spotting on your tires. So that's another option. Um, just up to you, whatever you have access to and whatever is the safest to keep your car up off the ground. Speaking of which, another good thing to do is to put down a tarp on the ground underneath the car. This helps keep your car clean, especially if you're parked outside and there might be some weather or things that blow up underneath or around your car. Um, it also is a deterrent for if you park your car outside or somewhere where it might be, um, there might be wild animals that are moving around, going around your car. They generally would much rather sleep on ground or grass or you know whatever is underneath the car, but if you have a tarp down, that plastic generally helps prevent animals from wanting to bed underneath your vehicle. Speaking of animals, also an easy thing that you want to do to keep yourself from uh, running into issues when you start your car in the spring is you want to plug off your intake and your exhaust. So this generally applies again to people that are parking their cars outside or somewhere where you might have mice or other rodents that want to winter up in your car. So if you've ever pulled your air box apart, taken your filter out, and you see a bunch of cat food or dog food down in the bottom of your air box, you had some mouse or squirrel or something like that that was bedding down in there because it was nice and warm and out of the weather. So one thing that you can do is simply plug up the snorkel of your intake pipe. Um, you can use rags, you can use whatever you want. Uh, some rodents are very persistent, so the best thing I've found to be able to plug these off is actually stick some steel wool down in there. Most rodents don't like to chew on steel, steel wool um, and they will generally avoid it. So packing your intake snorkel with steel wool, that way nothing gets in there, is a good idea. You can also do the same thing with your muffler. So simply shove some steel wool down the tailpipe just enough, you know, you don't have to pack it all the way up or anything like that, but a good wad of it right on the tailpipe should help prevent rodents from getting in there and causing a mess and either um, making you have a really, really weird rattle when you start up the car in the spring or just getting it all messed up with rodent leftovers. So it's an easy thing to do. If you park your car outside, I strongly recommend it. Or if you park your car in a garage where you keep your cat food, dog food, it's likely a good idea to keep that kind of stuff all covered up. Um, so one of the things that if you're keeping your car in really long-term storage is probably a good idea to at least consider is using some kind of a desiccant. Now, what is that, you say? Okay, when you go buy your shoes at Kohl's or Target or wherever, you pull out the little squares that says, do not eat. Yeah, those aren't flavor packets, that's desiccant. So desiccant helps absorb moisture and prevents your car or your shoes from getting really stinky whenever moisture is in that cloth material or in that carpet for a long time. So you can use a number of different things as a desiccant if you want to keep your car from getting musty or soggy or smelly if you're parking it for a long period of time. Uh, baking soda is a really easy one. You can use, actually if you've got a bunch of boxes of old shoes, you can use the little packets out of that. You can even buy desiccant online. Um, you can get, you know, jugs of this stuff for 30, 40 bucks. It's really not terribly expensive. It's an easy thing to do. And if you don't want to come back to a smelly, musty car in the spring, it's a pretty good idea. Um, a car cover, if you park your car outside for the winter, is a really good idea. Um, the one thing that a lot of people will make a mistake in doing that though is that they don't clean their car before they put their car cover on. And if you do that, when you're putting your car cover on and it's all dirty, you're moving the car cover around, getting it strapped down, that's good, except for that you've also just scratched up the paint or any of the other surfaces on the car because that dirt that was on there, you're moving it around. And even if you're really careful doing that, if you park your car outside, the wind you know, any kind of weather that's really going to blow that cover around is going to be moving that dirt, that debris all over your painted surfaces and scratching everything up. So 
if you use a car cover, give your car a good bath. Make sure it's nice and squeaky clean. Then put your car cover on and secure it down. And the most amount of um, protection you can give it with a car cover is using a good quality one. Don't go buy your cheapest one that you can get off of eBay or whatever. Um, get something that's got a nice soft liner, something that is you know, going to fit the car well. You don't want it to be super loose because as I mentioned, that wind blowing it around is only going to hurt. So get a nice one, spend a little bit extra cash on the car cover just to keep your car nice because that's the intent, right? So make sure that you do a good job with that one. Um, other than that, if you plan on doing any kind of winter modifications for the car, this is a good time to get some preparation done for that. So if you're planning on doing a suspension install, turbo kit, whatever, then at this point, you know, if you're going to do that, now's a good time. Get it up, prepared you where you want to do the work, set it up on jack stands, get the wheels off, you know, whatever you're going to do. That way, when your parts come in, you can be ready to go. So it looks like we have a question. Let's see what we've got. Someone wants to know what about shrink wrapping your car? I'm assuming they're talking about the big industrial rolls of shrink wrap oh. that we use on pallets. Wow. Well, that's a good question. Um, I've never tried it. So if you'd like to shrink wrap your car, uh, you know, I would probably say that as long as it's clean and you do a good job of it, go for it. I don't think most people have access to a lot of shrink wrap. Um, so would it work? Yeah, I, I bet it probably would. Um, that would definitely be an instance where if you did the entire car in a shrink wrap, I would certainly want to put some of that desiccant inside the car because that plastic cling wrap is going to keep a lot of moisture in. It's not going to allow the interior to breathe much at all. So I would definitely put some desiccant in the car. That way you didn't come back however many months later and it was a musty, smelly mess. So, um, but if you do that, send us pictures. I'd like to see it. <laughs> That's an interesting suggestion. Okay. Um, so we kind of covered the whys you, uh, the do's and don'ts maybe of why you'd want to either store your car or drive your car throughout the winter. Um, some of the popular questions that we've been asked recently about winter driving in general, um, is what would you do to help prevent rust? So especially on the, the first generation, second generation cars, and even into the third generation cars, I'm sure there have been instances of rust on the chassis. And this happens due to the car's gotten a lot of miles on it. You know, some of the paint has worn down on the bottom or some of the undercoating has worn off, those kinds of things. It happens to every vehicle over time. Some are worse than others. Um, but really it boils down to how are you taking care of it? How are you preventing more rust from happening? And really that is a simple answer of make sure you keep it clean, keep it dry. And on top of that, you want to protect it with some kind of a coating. So I'm not a body shop. I can't really give you specific recommendations, but really the easy answer is to keep it covered with some kind of a paint some kind of an undercoating that's uh, like a rubberized undercoating works great. Obviously, if it's on the outside of the car, you probably want to keep it looking nice. So some kind of a body paint with a, um, a clear over the top of it would look the best, but you're really just trying to keep bare metal down to a minimum as far as what's exposed. So at this point, if you want to prevent as much rust as possible, make sure that you don't have exposed bare metal on your car. Um, and what you do, if you can't cover it up, you know, you can't take it to a body shop to have it repaired or painted or covered professionally, you can buy a lot of that stuff at auto parts stores, at Walmart, you know, different cans of, of un rubberized undercoating or spray paint just to make sure that it's covered is usually the best and easiest way to prevent rust. Now you say, oh, my car's already got a little bit of rust, but I want to continue to, to keep it clean or keep it, um, nice looking or at least as nice as I can throughout the winter what else can you do you can take your car and go through car washes that have the underwash you know the undercarriage washes and that'll help especially if you live somewhere where they use a lot of magnesium or salt or something like that to help melt any snow or ice on the road and give the car more traction it works great for that but it also works great for resting your car 
So preventing that from staying on your car for a long period of time will help. So going through and washing the undercarriage, especially um, if you park in a heated garage, believe it or not, that can actually make that worse because as the car cycles from cold with that gunk on the undercarriage and then is warm overnight, that's actually gonna promote rust from propagating even quicker. So keep the undercarriage of the car clean, keep the suspension clean. If you can get in there with a pressure washer and clean your wheel wells, that kind of stuff will do, again, a long ways or go a long ways towards keeping the car as rust free or at least minimal rust as possible. Um, we did talk about this part here just a little while ago, uh, but another question that we had is, does keeping weight in the trunk help? Uh, yes, to some extent. Obviously, if you put too much back there or try to really overweight it, you're gonna create other problems for yourself. Um, one of the things a lot of people don't take into account is that when you're using winter tires like this that are designed to capture snow, um, and especially if you're driving somewhere where there is a lot of snow, you'll actually get buildup in the wheel well and you'll start to rub a lot more, even if you have normal sized tires. So if you have a lot of weight in the trunk that's pulling the car down, you'll get a lot of rubbing because you'll have that snow pack against your tires because of the additional weight. So that's one thing to keep in mind. A little bit probably goes a long way is the best answer for this one. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about that we've been asked today is, okay, this is all pretty pedestrian, normal stuff. Most people know this, right? I want to go big. I want to do something fun. I want to take my Miata out and go crazy with it in the winter snow. Awesome. What do I do? Well, there's a number of things you can do. Even if you just want to have some fun, really there's a couple of options that you can do that are pretty easy, such as putting on the winter tires, going out and doing winter uh, autocross or auto high performance driving events. There are even some places that'll have snow or ice tracks that you can go do and you don't have to have anything extravagant to go have some fun. Now, if you really want to dive off the deep end, you can do a few things such as putting on big knobbly tires. You can lift the car if you want to. Um, you can do all kinds of off-road conversions that are available nowadays, such as some of the Paco Motorsports 3-inch lift kits or the long arm conversion kit or uh, simply if you have coilovers that allow you to make adjustments to really raise the vehicle height up, you can have you know any normal or any, any wide range of, of options really to be able to do this. So what do you have to do to do those things? Well, that kind of depends. You can go pretty mild and not have to do a lot of modifications or you can go crazy and make your car an off-road monster. Um, I've done a little bit of that and you can kind of get away with a little bit and have a lot of fun. Um, if you're looking to maintain a street car, then a little bit is good. I'd probably say do the winter tires, maybe lift the right height up a little bit. Um, I wouldn't go too crazy on the tire size, although you can go a little bit bigger. Your speedo is not going to be very accurate, you know, of course, the bigger you get and the bigger you go on your wheel size and tire size, you're also going to probably run into more issues with rubbing. So unless you like sawzalls and cutoff wheels to be able to make it fit just right or make everything work without rubbing because there's nothing to rub, then I would go with a pretty normal sized tire. You know, you don't have to go crazy in order to have a good time and have a safe driving and fairly good amount of grip with a winter setup on your Miata. Um, you can do that. We've got some pictures actually if you want to see some of the, the crazier stuff that we have encountered, done, or talked with others that have done and used some of the parts that we sell. You can go all kinds of crazy and build a custom off-road snow plow rig if you want to. Um, there's a lot of options. Basically if you're looking into doing that, that you're going to run into some exciting fitment issues. So just know that ahead of time. Um, if you have any questions about it, feel free to give us a call and I can probably talk you through some of it. Um, but there's certainly options out there. So if you want to go big, absolutely. It's a great time. Uh, these cars are super modifiable. You have a lot of options. Uh, if you decide to do something like that, send us some pictures. We'd love to see. 
it's a lot of fun to be able to go sliding a Miata through the snow. So I definitely encourage it. Um, if you're not sure if you're driving skill, you've never driven a Miata in the snow, I do encourage you go out and try to find an autocross event or a snow driving day or you know some kind of winter driving event that you can actually see how your car handles in the cold, in the wet, in the snow, in the ice, whatever. So I think that you'll gain a lot of confidence if you've never done that before just by going to that event even if you're not out there to be a hero and spin big rooster tails of snow, if you're just out there learning how to drive your car, you're gonna have a good time. It's low speed fun, and you can do lots of sideways drifty stuff and feel like a hero without really worrying about wrecking your car or running into anything at high speeds like you would at a normal autocross or track day, for instance. And it's all relative, but generally it's gonna be slower speed stuff. So. Uh, really, it's all about preparing, being ready, going out and know what you're going to get into and prepare yourself for that kind of driving. So the more that you do it, the more prepared you're going to be and the more fun you're probably going to have. So thanks for sticking with us. Um, I know we covered a lot today. If you have any questions or you want to get into crazy lifted snowmobile Miatas, um, I probably don't have all the answers to that. But feel free to give us a call, send us an email, leave us a comment below. We'd love to help you out and talk with you through your projects. If you want to do anything particular, definitely let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for sticking with us through this Facebook Live event. And we'll see you next time, about this time, this week. Um, usually Thursdays are around 2. Have a good one. Keep boosting.